A ball of nervousness began to build inside my stomach, wondering when he would actually want to have sex. The thought filled me with excitement and a strange yearning. Even though I wasn't particularly pleased with Jack right now, I still found him incredibly attractive, lust-inducing even. The thought of sleeping with him before the wedding was a bit daunting, but if it helped to strengthen our shared relationship, then I was willing to give it a go. Jack, how many girls have you been with? I asked curiously. My question seemed to startle him, and he hesitated before answering. Four. There was no way that was an honest answer. Jack Campbell, multi-billionaire sex symbol who dated dozens of Hollywood starlets, couldn't possibly have ever only had sex with four women. Really? I couldn't hide the disbelief from my voice. Really? He was dead serious. Does that make you feel any better about me? I'm sure you think I'm vile and impure. His eyes darkened. I never said I thought you were vile and impure. I tried not to be offended. Oh, what do you think of me, Melita Wynne? Jack pierced me with his deep gaze, and I knew that the mood for the rest of the evening depended on what I said next. I searched for the right answer, but nothing came to mind. So I decided to go with honest instead, whatever the consequence would be. I think you're one of the most beautiful men I have ever seen. I think you're charismatic and kind. But I also think that you're not as confident as you let on. He smirked. You're a good judge of character. Now let's take care of that virginity problem. I wasn't sure if I was ready, but I had already told Jack that I wouldn't make him wait, so there was no point in postponing it. Quietly, he stood and offered me his hand, and I allowed him to lead me down the hallway to the dungeon. For a moment, I thought about hesitating, but when he opened the door, I stepped inside, taking in the disconcerting ambiance. Everything was exactly how I remembered it before I had left for the BDSM school. Not a chain had been tampered with, or a paddle removed from the wall of punishment devices. I turned, and my breath hitched as I realized that Jack was standing right behind me, so close that we were practically touching. His blue eyes enveloped me as I looked up at him, and before I could even remember to breathe, Jack's lips were touching mine. His kiss was surprisingly sweet and gentle for all his unpleasant intentions, and I found my body relaxing when he pulled away. Are you scared? he asked. No. I couldn't tell if I was lying or not, but I chose not to be afraid. Good. Jack pushed my long black hair away from my shoulders and urged me to tilt my head so that he could kiss my neck. The fluttery kisses that he placed on my skin were soft and affectionate, far too delicate for a man who only wished to inflict pain upon me. His hands fell to the front of my blouse, and he began unfastening the buttons one at a time. I stood frozen like a statue, trying to enjoy Jack's touch, but so overwhelmed by the suddenness of everything that was going on. When my blouse was fully unbuttoned, I helped to shrug it off onto the floor. Without hesitation, his hands went to unbuckle my belt next, and with that task finished, he unfastened my jeans. Take your shoes off, Jack whispered before stepping away from me. I watched him undress as I slipped out of my ballerina flats and pulled my jeans down the rest of the way. Jack's lean, muscular body was appealing to the eyes, hairless and fit. While he wasn't broad like Liam, I found his swimmer's build very attractive. <laughs>